Hi folks, I'm going to um, do a, a smaller fly today. Um, nothing wrong with smaller flies for the predators and pike, and sometimes, as I've learned, pike prefer really small flies. Um, I'm going to use um, a Deer Creek Diariki 930 to a hook. Um, it's, it's like a bunker buster, this thing. It's absolutely bomb proof. Um, great hooks. I'm going to use a clear mono thread and I'm going to use some white glisten glint plus. Um, this has got like a, a pearl through it, which is really nice in the water, but I'm going to kind of jazz it up a bit as you're going to see. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to add um, a little glue. And I've not got any replacement crop glue yet, so I'm just going to use a pretty standard generic glue on there. There we go. I'm going to sniff on a bit, still got cold. What can you do? Um, okay, so first off, we're going to put down a base layer of clear mono. And making sure that goes right down to the back, and I'm just gonna clip that off. Like so, okay. Now again, with glisten glint, the less you use, the better. You get a far better fly, and obviously your your materials will last longer as well, which ultimately means you get more flies out of a packet, which is what we want. Okay, so we have a standard a standard length um, there, and we're gonna tease it out a little bit. To be fair, when you pull this stuff out of the packet, it does actually taper quite nicely just by itself. Okay, so we're going to lay that on, and ultimately, this first one you put on is going to be the, the ultimate length of your fly. So we're going to put that just around there, I think. Okay, and then we're just going to secure that down. What I usually do with my thumb and forefinger is I'm doing this, I kind of push it around the hook a bit. Like so, okay. Then bring it back on itself, and you can see we're about that far away from the hook. Okay. Now we're going to put a, another piece on, and again, this one is going to be slightly shorter. And we're going to build right up to almost the eye itself. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is just straighten those out like that. Not too nicely. Now I'm gonna add some some green in there. This is um, just like an Angelina fiber. And I'll take a little piece of this. You can use red as a gilt flash, whatever you like. But I'll place that in there. Just tease it around the hook like so. And then Hold it back, like so. What I'm going to do now is just bring that right up. It's a very quick fly to make this, but it's a devastating pattern. Um, we're just going to fold that back, like so. And underneath. Like so. And again, I'm twisting it just to take a little bit of the kink out. And a few wraps. A few wraps around, like so. Okay, and I'm now going to go for an angel here. Um, this one is in chartreuse. As I say, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Apparently. Okay. Now we're just going to lay half of that this way, and the other half's facing out front. And again, you can see that's already naturally tapered, so we don't need to worry too much about tapering it. Okay. A couple of turns, then you're bringing it, your thread back, splitting that angel here, laying that down. 
one, two, and bring your thread all the way to the eye and fold that back like so. Okay, now we're just going to tie that off. Now I will say something here, if you're, um, say you guys in America and you're, maybe when I was over there um, and I was fishing around Lake Champlain area and there was a lot of things called black nose dace, well you can actually make these to represent those as well by having the, the white underbelly and instead of the green you could have a yellow angel hair through there and then you could have a black angel hair over the top. That would do the trick. Just mix and match to, to what your local fish are eating, um, what they prey on. Okay, and again we touch that. Anyone got any good cold remedies besides whiskey? Okay, now we're just gonna UV this. And again, just a touch on there. Like I said before, the trout guys um, who do those pretty amazing little buzzer things like Andy Saunders does. Um, I think they use a, a bobbin and they spread it all over the, the size 48 hook and then they zap it but obviously we don't need that kind of finesse with this because we're doing pike flies so we're just going to go around like this like so only takes a few seconds there you go and tack free okay so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to take that out of the vise and i'm just going to give it a, a little trim i mean you would probably use it like that if you wanted um but now i always trim it from the back with the smaller patterns i've said before that i don't usually trim my flies um i don't with the big ones um but with smaller patterns i i do tend to so we're just working we're just working back at an angle I don't know if you can see that properly. Oh, that's looking pretty good. And there's a couple of loose bits there. So generally on the big flies, I, I tend not to do this, but for some reason on the small flies, uh, you need to just to get the, the profile right. Okay. 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 That's that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to uh, use some smaller gator eyes. These ones, I believe, are 8mm. Um, if I can get them out. There we go. Okay, simple as that. And I'm going to actually UV these in. Um, you'll see how that's done. So what I do is I take an eye like so, and I put some UV over the top, and then I place the eye on, hold it down, and give it a blast, like so. So we just put the one on. I tend not to do this with the with the, with the bigger eyes, but with the small eyes, you can you can get away with doing this. Okay, so I'm going to just put that on there, hold it down, and give it a zap. Like so, and that's pretty much solid. Now I'm going to show you something else you could do here, because um, you have like a, a little gap in there between the between the eyes, so we can actually fill that. But rather than put a huge blob of this stuff on, is just try and layer it. Like so. Okay. It does produce a, a beautiful head on your fly, this does. And again, it's bomb proof. Um, if you want to go and giving it an actual an actual coating all around the eyes. Just what I do is I just spread this on the eyes and just push it so it's just falling over the edge 
of the rim of that eye and then it just zap that just give it a few seconds extra on this just to make sure it's set and that's look at that that's not even tacky at all again if it does start to go tacky change your batteries in your lamp okay and we're going to do the same on this side again with this pattern if you go and look at the Deer Creek site you can see there is no end of colors so you can pretty much pretty much match any of your, your local bait fish pretty much wherever you are in the world um, with the colors they have um, and I do like their white colors um, for the bellies and they also have an off an off white one it's kind of like a creamy color sorry my memory forgets and I can't remember the actual name of it but if you go to the glisten glint color chart you'll you'll see the colors there um, and the white and the cream is always a good a good base to start um, with with any kind of bait fish and you can you can mess it up on the back and there you go um, there's a pretty little bait fish McFluff Chucker from an independent Scotland yay freedom